Huga Shaka. Hey, folks, just a friendly reminder that all shows on the Madness Comic Network are produced by their individual hosts and in no way reflect the opinions of the network as a whole. The final frontier. It has never been so uncertain as now. AI, VR, haptic wear, nanotechnology, mass destruction with a remote click. Now we are finally seeing the true potential and dangers of an ever-connected and overly policed hyper-technological world. Have we finally become the architect of our own demise? Is there still hope? Welcome to the future. Welcome to Punk Droid. Mr. Chris, what up? Also, Chris Kale from Rock and Roll Band Five Finger Death Punch. Heard that you're about to launch your newest board game, Gods of Metal, where you take on the persona of different metal musicians to stop the overlords and their demons from taking over reality. I think I know a metal musician that can help you fight those overlords and those demons. That is me, Chris Kale. So, shout out to you, Chris. Shout out to all of the Laughing Rogue crew. And shout out to Gods of Metal. Uh, I will be in there taking over reality from the demons and the overlords. Chris Kale. Just like it says there on my hat, in case I forget. I do play bass. <laughs> An ancient darkness is breaking through into our reality. The overlords are coming. Their demons united, they'll stop at nothing to tear our world to shreds. And the only thing that can stop them is the power of metal. You have been chosen by the gods of metal to lead this crusade of finger-shredding fury. You must write the sick riffs, craft the awesome lyrics, find unholy rhythms, and set the heads banging. Show the overlords that their darkness is nothing compared to yours. Gods of Metal is a co-op deck building game for one to four players. You and your bandmates must work to create the most powerful band in human history. Find mystical instruments of legend, outlandish costumes to improve your powers, and recruit mascots to help you battle the overlords. Find the power of pure decibels and use them to destroy your enemies by crafting songs that will literally blow their minds. Form a band. Save the world. Gods of Metal. Now on Kickstarter.
<laughs> All right. Good morning, folks. Uh, it looks like I'm here by myself today. This, I am Les Garner, and this is the Comic Artist Hour. So, where are we this morning, folks? Uh, that's actually a very pertinent question for me because I've been in like five states over the last four days. <laughs> it's like I don't even know where I am anymore. But uh, I just got back from uh, doing a show in Milwaukee, Wisconsin by way of Chicago, I spent the night in Chicago and then headed on over to Milwaukee. Good Lord. Then, then made my way from Milwaukee to uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and then on up to uh, Cincinnati for, uh, for a couple things. And then back home to good old Paducah, Kentucky today. So actually got back yesterday evening. So, uh, okay. Man. I, I will field comments for you until your buddy Charles arrives. Um, cool, man. He drove right by us, bro. Uh, I drove right by you. Where you at, man? I'm in southwest Michigan. He drove right by us. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, we, we went went all the way up to uh, Milwaukee and uh, for the Midwest Gaming Classic. That thing was enormous. See, and that's where I needed my boy Chris to be with that gods of metal game right there. Oh you know yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, the gods of metal game would have cleaned up at this show. And, uh, saying? It's like the gaming shows. We we're, we're, we're trying to figure this out. It's like, yeah, it's comic related. There's comic art, there's cool stuff, but it's gaming. You, you got to find the right place to, to promote it. You know, dude, I, mean? I, I had, I had a freaking amazing show this weekend. Uh, copies of Apocalypse Girl Volume 1 just burned off the table like mad. And uh, I had uh, so like a little history on it. The, the first show that I did after I got out of the hospital from having had my stroke was, was the Midwest Gaming Classic. Uh, Charles, uh, who ought to be here, but ain't. I figure something's probably up. But uh, Charles is friends with the folks who put this thing on. And, you know, while I was in the hospital or as I was getting out of the hospital, he's like, hey, there's these folks who'd like to have you out for a show if you're interested in trying to do it. And I was like, yeah, I got to get back on the horse, man. You know, I can't I can't just let it go like that. So I went and uh, and it was, it was good. It was good last year. But uh, what was really nice is I'm, I met a lot of people and met a lot of people. I think I made a lot of, a lot of interesting little friends and things there. And, uh, I go this year, th this year I had uh, a nice fat presence. I had a, uh, they, they invited me back as a guest artist and, uh, it was great. I was, I was a featured artist of the show. So they put me up with the hotel and all this, all the, the schnazzy stuff. And that was great. Um, and you know, and I've done so much work since then that I had uh, my my booth was massive this year. It, uh, I mean, it was it was the same size as everybody else's, but vertically it went up. God, I think it went up something like twelve feet, and it was just a ton of stuff on it. And then I had the covers that I did paintings from a couple of years ago of the covers from Reign of Dracula. Had all six of those there, which those things are enormous. They're three feet wide by four feet tall, and they all connect. So together, they make an 18 foot long painting. And I had all of those there. And wouldn't you know it, man, within the first hour of the show, this guy shows up who had bought Apocalypse Girl last year when I was there and hung out with me last year. He was a super cool little guy named Tommy. And uh, I did not know last year that Tommy owns a shop owns a pretty happening shop somewhere in northern Wisconsin and he had been he like he had been budgeting all year for this show specifically for me and Mr. Tommy came in saw those paintings and was like I want them I want all of them wow and so as of yesterday all six of those paintings are going up on a wall in a shop in Northwest Wisconsin. Nice. And, uh, 
man, you know, uh, you know, artist life is a roller coaster and we get a lot of hiccups and bumps in the road. And, you know, it's like, you know, it's feast or famine quite often. And, uh, you know, I've been hitting a bit, a little bit of a rough spot lately, just making everything kind of roll over so everything meets. Man, between Tommy and all the other awesome folks at this show, they they more than uh, more than rectified my situation. Like uh, I'm I'm actually the this show and some of the things that came out of it, which is phone calls and things coming, all kinds of stuff I've got going on over the next couple of days, people that'll be following up with me and I'm following up with them. Uh, looks like I'm probably going to end up doing some artwork for a bunch of pinball companies. That'd be cool. cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll do artwork for anybody. I don't care. It's what I do for a living. So, and, uh, you know, it's of artwork. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it, I guess, you know, I'm just, kind of as a working artist, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, uh, it's amazing how fast things can turn around. You know, yeah, well, it, it doesn't help to, to network and find the right people. Yeah. I, I try to tell people that it's like, look, you, you, everybody is, all these people are talented. Yeah. They're all great at what they do, but, until you network with the right people who want to throw money behind what you're doing, you're all out there on an island by yourself. You got to network with people. You, you, yeah. Have to. And and a lot of us, I know myself included, a lot of us artists aren't necessarily. We don't have the temperament really a lot of times for the networking side of it, and I mean that's that's why I mean the artists who are the most successful tend to be the ones who do the networking thing the best, and. Yeah. You know, I, I'm. I think I finally kind of found my uh, found my my voice for networking and for doing things. And well, I shouldn't even say that. Uh, like the online networking that everybody seems to focus on sucks. I hate it. I've always hated it. I've never been good at it. And I, I, I despise even thinking about it. I do it. I do. I do my best with it, but I, I despise it now. That's why now, I try to make it painless on you guys. Oh yeah, but now drop me into a show. Give me a, give me a table or a booth at a show, and I'll kick ass yeah, every but, single time. Dude, I want a table at a show. I want to do our show from a show. I want, you see what I'm saying? Because I believe, oh yeah, I believe in the networking thing, and especially online. You all go to the shows and you meet each other, but. At the same time, there's people that never go to certain shows. Yeah. Okay? So you you're never gonna meet the people at the shows you don't go to. Yeah. You know, um, there is a chance you might meet some of them through online experiences like a network like this or or uh, Nita's network. You know, I mean, there's a bunch of people that are trying to actually network online and make it less painful for you guys. You're not just out there on an island by yourself trying to shout at the world. It's like we're trying to build a platform where everybody knows this is where you go to find people like you. You know, yeah. and, I, I've kind of, I've kind of came up with a little twist on a, on a, a pretty common old saying saying the saying was always uh, those who can do and those can't uh, those who can't teach mm-hmm. uh, and uh, these days I say those who can do and those who can't have excellent social networking because <laughs> most of the time it's like it's like if, if you're really good you get work or I mean you're trying to get work and, and once you've got the work then you're working. So, and if you're, if you've got any kind of turnover, you, you manage to put together something, then you're going to be working. And and the more you're working, the less time and energy you have to put into social media. That's where I come in. That's how, that's how I came in. I was looking at friends who do an eight to five job. They come home, they try to get their art done. They try to get their work done. And then at some point you got to figure out a half hour to go out online and Tell people about it, or nobody's going to know. That's actually right? a harder thing to do than you'd think it would be. Well, and I know it was a hard thing to do. That's why that was why I built this whole thing was to make it 
easier on you guys, you know, to be seen. I mean, yeah. I'm serious. That was what was behind it. There was well, no way back then. There was no thought of building a network or any of that. It was just like, how can I get these guys seen? They're really good. You know, we started well, doing think, the prom con thing, you know. Um, and, I think and, I was on one of the early crime cons a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was what my vision was for helping people get seen because I saw you all on your little islands. And it's like, how can I bring all these guys to one place so people yeah. know where to go find them? And that's what, oh, the, that's what the Facebook group is for. That's what the, 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 the network on YouTube is for. That's, that's really what it's about. I, I, you know, I remember a time back probably around 2010 to 2012 when I had a really strong social media presence and then uh, it was like uh, Facebook and Twitter and everybody, they all started changing their algorithms and, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's I mean, making money. Yeah. It, it, everything turned into having to buy ads, which now it's like you can buy those ads. And I was just talking to people this morning. I was like, you know, you have no idea whether those ads actually do anything or not most of the time because they could tell you you've got 400 impressions. Well, how do I know? How do yeah. I know? I have to trust you to tell me I got, got those impressions. And then it's like, okay, if I've got 400 impressions from an ad that I took out and not a one of those converted, okay, then either I've got a shit product or you're full of crap. Yeah, they're full of crap, dude. I, I told yeah. people a long time ago, look, when I the first campaign I was involved in way back in 2019, 2020, Dude bought Facebook ads. I'm on Facebook all day, every day. I saw dude's ad once in the 30 days that he paid for. And I told him, I was like, dude, they're not putting your ad out there. I'm a comic guy. I'm on Facebook all day. I would see it. They're not putting it out there for you. They don't serve you well, you know. And I've said yep. that ever since. I, I don't see that many Facebook ads. I see a whole lot more people just out there posting about their stuff than I do Facebook posting about their stuff. Pretty much. You know, and they're paying Facebook. It's like, fuck paying them. Pay me. I'll make sure people see your stuff. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, That's what the whole point was. It's like, I couldn't believe that they were paying. I can't believe anybody who's paying somebody to promote their stuff who they've never seen promote anything. You know, like I, 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 I have, I have seen some of the numbers. I've, I've seen some Facebook stuff kind of connect here and there, but it's, it's like, it's like really, yeah, I'm yeah. not, I don't believe that it's worth what you pay for it. It, it doesn't engage here. Okay. We're doing this show. This show is on, two different Facebook chat or two different Facebook places with zero views. It's getting yep. views on Twitter. It's getting views on, on YouTube, but it gets no views on Facebook. Um, they don't want us to, to succeed with Facebook. They want us to pay them yeah. whether we succeed or not. Yep. They don't have a goal for helping us succeed. They just want us to pay them. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah I'm, I'm, What's up, Kirby? Kirby, Kirby in the house. He's another artist from, from Doc's but, from over on Doc's channel. Oh. Um, now, yeah, Brian man. said that creature is incredible. I need to develop the attention span to really get into digital drawing. Um, you know, uh, I I do a lot of my pages. I do a lot of the pencils digital, and then I'll print it and ink it traditional. And I'm just I'm inking this digital because uh, I can I can stream it easier that way I get more fidelity you know it, it just it looks better on screen than if I'm doing a camera over my over my hands. But the uh, fact that you can ink traditionally and digitally with the same confidence and skill level to me that's amazing. I I appreciate that I, I don't see any real difference in it. Uh, the, uh, I mean, actually, there's some things going digital. I'll tell you straight up. The main reason I do it traditional, probably the only reason I do it traditional, 
is so that I have original pages I can sell. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's and that's the smart way to go about it. Okay. Um, even if you do digital work, if you do part of it traditionally, like what he said, you do the pencils digitally and then ink it traditionally, you can still sell that as original art. And you oh, yeah. have a piece to sell. Well, I, I, like um, one of the, there was a page that I sold this past weekend that's from Apocalypse Girl. And it started out with digital pencils. Then I printed that on an illustration board in, in this same color blue and fleshed out the pencils traditional just because I got tired of being on the computer. Right. Right. So then I finished out that page with these really tight, super nice pencils. And then I looked at the pencils. I was like, I don't feel like putting ink on that. I just like the way it looks like that. So I scanned that back in and inked that digital. And so a uh, gentleman this weekend bought the original pencil page. He was perfectly happy, you know, happy with that. And uh, I, I thought that was kind of cool. You know, it's, it's nice when that happens. I acquired uh, a couple of pages this week for the, uh, for the art auction, for the, for the Roku art auction. From cool. Bill Moss pages from uh, Return to Return to Hell Space. Uh, it's Zen and Nira X. I don't know if you're familiar with Zen. Yeah, Nira. I remember Zen like back in the 90s, I think. Check this out. This is one of the pages that we have for sale. You got to look up at the screen. Yeah. yeah, that's that's one of the pages with Zen and Nira X. Nice from Bill Moss art. And this is the other page that's going to be available. I like That's Bill Moss, cool. man. He's fucking cool as hell. He's like, here, Pops, here's some art. You can sell oh, man. Roku. That's yeah, freaking Roku. great. So, so what's what's up with the whole Roku thing? I, I don't really know any details about any of it. So, Well, with I'm, I want to go to Roku because it's an untapped audience. and There's just no presence for the type of stuff we do there. Okay. And there's millions of people that use Roku. You know, um... It's an untapped audience. That's that alone should say it all. But it's also a, uh, it's not censored like YouTube mm. or Facebook. Okay. Um, so what, what's the what's the what's the barrier to entry for getting in there? Uh, what do you mean the barrier for entry? I mean, is is it a cost thing? Is it a curation thing? You know, what what what's it take to get something going on there? Oh, it takes money and a developer. Hmm. To do, I mean, we're developing a view on demand channel, right? Like a Netflix. Gotcha. Where somebody could go and binge watch any of the shows on the network. Hmm. See, like you'll have a playlist for the comic artists hour, and people will be able to go and just binge watch all your shows, right? Okay. Um, that'll be the same for everybody on the network. What's up, Charles? Hey, how are you? Yeah, what's happening? Um, Good that's, morning, that's Charlie. Good morning. Good morning. It'll be that way for the whole network. All the playlists for all the shows will be there, right? The main thing for me is a lot of people, I see it all the time on shows where people are biting their tongue. They're afraid to say what's on their mind because YouTube yeah. won't kick them off or demonetize them or whatever, right? And, and the fear of staying in line should never be a part of art. Agreed. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we need to go to a platform where you guys can do what you do and say what you want to say and not worry about YouTube demonetizing you or ticking you off their platform. Hmm. We won't have that issue with Roku. If somebody does something that's seriously out of line, I'm going to get an email from the DMCA or from the FBI or the FCC, and they're going to say, yo, Pops, that show's got to come down. Okay. Hmm. If you don't take it down, we're going to take down your whole network. I'm going to send you that email. Hey, Les, you got a little bit out of line, dude. That episode's got to come down. I'm going to take that episode down, but I'm not going to demonetize you. I'm not going to cool. remove all your other content from the channel because the DC, the FCC had their pennies in a wad. Sure. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to eliminate that. Wealthy like thing. Elon Musk, so we could just say uh, mucky, mucking mucks. You yeah. know, like the way yeah. he said it to Disney, it's like, how dare you use money as a form of terrorism? And, and that's all it is, is just monetary ter terrorism. So we want to take this 
this network, all of our shows, to Roku so that all of our people can do what they want to do. I'm tired of hearing Doc say, oh, I can't say what I want to say. I'm tired of hearing people say they can't show what they want to show or say what they want to say or be who they are because of YouTube and Google. I'm tired well, of that shit. you know, you're, you're free to be who you are as long as it fits with the uh, prescribed yeah. the prescribed BS of the day, whatever that may be. The so. other thing is there's no, there's not going to be no um, thresholds for monetization. Look, you bring your channel to our, our, or you bring your show to our channel and you're monetized on day one on Roku. That's on day cool. one. And not because you have 500 subscribers or 5,000 watch hours or any of that dumb shit. You're going to be monetized on day one. And hopefully people watch your show and you make some money. That would be cool. I mean, it's not going to be about, oh, you have to earn your way in. If you're part of our network, you'll be monetized on day one. That's amazing. That's very cool, dude. So, so how, how did the um, uh, Roku um, uh, platform evolve to become this amazing alternative where it respects um, speech instead of uh, working to destroy it? Well, the whole thing with Roku is Roku... It's over the top TV. Okay. okay? It's not internet. You, yeah. you see what I'm saying? They build their own TVs. They make and sell their own TVs. Oh, They're wow. not going to get put out of business by anybody. Right. You see, that's that's, that's actually pretty damn cool. Yeah, those those Roku right. TVs, you can set them up to use. Like, you can run your Netflix through them. You can run. You, you can run all kinds of apps and things yeah. through them that yeah. they've got. But they've got uh, they've got yeah, but then, but then they've got the base, you know, their actual Roku network yep. runs on them. When yeah, when other the places, shows, they got it's 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 huge, and it's like I, people are like, yeah, but so many people don't know what Roku is. It's like if you're paying attention, you know what Roku is. Well, I, I have Roku on uh, every uh, set now that I'm realizing it. Yeah. Um, but but I just thought it was a uh, channel surfer thing I, I never really paid attention to it except it's, it's wow. it makes it easier for my mom to watch things and okay instead of paying money to uh microsoft to use to look at uh, the apps through their system you know you just hook up a roku to the tv and you watch everything and it doesn't cost you anything well now some, yep. some of them you got to pay for i mean disney is on roku you don't get disney for free because you have roku well, well, you know, yeah. Right. But for example, let's say you, you pay uh, uh, ten bucks for Netflix. Okay, now if you have the uh, uh, Microsoft Xbox, well, you got to pay ten bucks to use yeah. the uh, ability to use the apps on yeah. Xbox. So yeah, every month, right? twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, every month. But but with Roku, my understanding is you pay a flat fee, hooray, and then you just uh, plug it in your TV, hooray. And then from the um, waves of the internet, it uh, will play whatever you want, and you could choose to add more to it. Or if you're already paid for a product like Netflix, for example, it will say, "Go ahead and pass it through." You know, yeah. we're happy. We make our money on commercials. We don't care. Yeah, you can you can log in. Like if you have a, a Disney account, you can log into the Disney account through Roku. So you know that that. It just it just sees it like another device. The cool thing is is that even if you don't pay for any pay services, you pay that one time for your Roku remote, you plug it into your TV, and there's still tons of free programming. Oh yeah. Well, tons my mom of loves it. Yeah, yeah, she's 89, so you know. The old yeah. folks tend to love TV a lot, I noticed. And and yeah. all of your free like movie services like Tubi and Plex and all those you can run oh, yeah. those all through your Roku too. So basically, once you once you have it all on your Roku remote, it's it's all right there, you know. <clears throat> and and like you said, you can add stuff in that you want to pay for if you want, but you don't have. You, there's there's just tons of programming. You're never you're never gonna run out of something to watch. See, I, I got into Roku probably back in like 2009, I believe, when uh, I, I used to watch, uh, oh no, I'm going to out myself. I used to watch Glenn Beck a lot. Like I yeah. watched him every evening and wow. uh, he, the Glenn, Glenn Beck was like one of the, 
the early adopters of Roku, I mean, I, I, I think their their entire company really got off the ground with uh, when when he started the Blaze Network, right? And that was a big thing. It was Blaze Network, and back then, uh, uh, the the Blaze Network started all their streaming. They were a sister to MLB. What is MLB? Yeah, they, they, they were a sister network to MLB back then mm-hmm. doing the streaming. And it was uh, uh, Roku had gotten Beck and MLB. And that was what really got them going. And that's usually all it takes is one or two, one or two that have a huge following and you can, mm-hmm. you can get people to look, you know. Yep. And, and with, with Les Garner, uh, uh, we're going to take uh, probably cancel 12, 12 to 13 streaming services because of Les. The, with how popular he is. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been amazing. I wish. I wish. <laughs> I tell you what, though we had we had a great weekend, man. Oh my god, it was it was crazy. I mean, there was there was a lot of people came back out to see me from last year, and that was nice. So, you know, we moved the paintings. There was all kinds of stuff that went down, and uh, it's all kinds of stuff on the horizon too. Like uh, I'm going to be at C two E two now, Woo! which was not on the cards a little over a month ago. And uh, that was that was interesting. That's uh, if you guys know Mike and Mindy, Mike and Mindy Wheeler. I know some people, some folks find them super controversial. I, I've known them for years, and you know I think they're good folks. You know the, uh, you know I, I don't I don't have to like everything somebody says to think they're good people. And uh, Mike and Mindy are good people, and they they published Comics Illustrated, and they gave me a featured artist spot in March, and. Uh, they invited me to C2E2 with them. And I said, yes. Yeah, I'm, and I'm then, just going to not say nothing. Well, after... i uh, not saying nothing when it comes to them because I hear about all the money that he lost in the endeavor we worked together with, all the money that he spent. And it seems to me like everybody got paid but me. So, um, wow. yeah, I got, mm-hmm. nothing. I, I got nothing when it comes to them. Sorry. Uh, well... He, they, he lost five thousand dollars, or he used spent five thousand dollars on everything, that, and he lost that. Um, he didn't pay me anything for my work. He was paying everybody else, obviously, or he wouldn't have lost no money. Hmm. But he didn't pay me, so you know, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, so far, man, they they've they've been pretty damn good to me, and uh, that's. Uh, well, that, they gave me the invite, and then when they reached out to the rep to let the folks at C2E2 know there'd be another person at their table, the folks at C2E2 went ahead and bumped me up to, to a guest thing and put me on the, the bill for the show. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, I I, I, I owe them a little bit for that. You know, I, that's a, I really appreciate that. That was a big help to me. Because there's a bunch of opportunities that have opened up for me because of that. Like Which some awesome. some crazy stuff opening up for me because there's people I'll, I'll be meeting with at C2E2 and lots of stuff going on that I'm really, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be looking at those opportunities if it hadn't been for that. So, you know, I, I hate hearing whenever anybody has, a, has an issue with something like that, you know, because that's things happen. Was and, that was my first interaction with them, and mm. I worked my ass off, dude. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it was like so toxic. It was such a toxic environment that I had to separate myself from it. Oof. When I went to resign, they wouldn't take my resignation. Wow. So I had to be a dick and get them to fire me, but. It that the word doesn't even matter because they never paid me. Mm. I just worked for them for free, and well, they want to yeah. make a big deal out of how they had to fire me. And it's like you didn't, you didn't have to fire me. Mm. I wanted to leave. I wanted nothing to do with you because you weren't coming through with what you said. You know, not only that, but Mike was just so toxic. 
online to prospective customers, mm. it was like, dude, you're just chasing people away. Stop, stop, quit being like that. Just get out of the way and let me do the promotion. That's why you hired me. Get oh. out of the way. And he wouldn't get mm. out of the way. And he kept going out there and making things worse and making things worse and making things worse. And finally, I was like, dude, I'm done. I'm out. Mm. Very wow. impressive. That that sucks, dude. And yeah, so far, I mean, everything I've done with them has been been on the up and up and been super cool. So, you know. But the really the only thing I could say about them is that he's probably cost many millions with his attitude, the way he talks to people, and the way he treats people. No. Well. Yeah. Hey, I'm Les. Gonna, I'm gonna peel up off of that subject because. Yeah. Les. I mean, uh, I, I, awesome I, I'm going to jump in, and, and, and you know what's really funny? Is I'll, it's how I'll, 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 I'll call up and I'll let me, say, let me get this hey, out Ross, is my mic off? Let me, let me get this out real quick. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm on some of Mike's streams from time to time with him. I get invited in, and, you know, it. You know he's got a personality, and, and I kind of, it, it is what it is, and uh Sometimes it makes me laugh quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I always tell them, you know, it's like, I'm freaking Switzerland, man. You know, so that's pretty much it. It's, it's, it's his rep to, to build or, or destroy, right? It's like, it just, I wasn't going to let it affect mine. Mm. You know? And, you know, I liked Mike. I liked Mindy. I wouldn't have gotten involved with them if I didn't. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're trying to build something and sell a product, sell a service. And you can't be out there making issue with your prospective customers before you've even launched this thing. Hey, Pops. Yeah. May I tell you why I do this? No. Because it's really fun to give back to the fans. You know, <laughs> that's the way I look at it. You know, right. these wonderful people, you know, like, like, like Les, it's always fun because, uh, uh, you know, I'd be like, hey, Les, do a con. He's like, oh, no, not in a <laughs> con. Ugh, this monkey balls. It. But then often, you know, uh, something really positive comes from it. And it's like, I hate this. Something positive comes from this. Bleh. But I'll well, deal with it. But one thing I have to say very positively about the less is even though the money is useful, he's in it really for the fans. He really enjoys the fans. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I, I hate driving the shows. Absolutely hate it. I hate traveling the shows. And I've worked real hard to have a home and a studio and some land that I really like to be on. So things that take me away from you know, I, I'm a very lucky person in that I live in a place that is exactly where I want to spend most of my time. So anything that 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 tries to pull me away from that, I'm like, it That's better me. be good. It better be good. I mean, it, it better be worth it. <laughs> and See, uh, I you mean, you guys talk about setting up the cons to sell stuff, and it's like, I sit here and I'd, I'd love to be able to set up. I've done it once. I'd love to yeah. be able to set up at a con and do the show. Oh man, that'd be easy. Yeah, yep. it is easy. We've done it. Okay, right. it, it's e it's just getting getting a con to let you. Oh, it's you know you know. Um, um, See, I don't have Carl, those. Charles is your man for that. Yeah, I don't have those connections. Those friends that'll say, "Okay, pops, we'll give you a table in the corner, and you can set up the Madness Roadshow, and you can interview anybody you want that wants to come to your booth during this during the weekend and book and do short interviews, whatever." But be live pretty much the whole time, right? That would be so cool. Fans, you, have, you, you do a forty-eight hours straight, and like this, uh, uh, this is uh, at hour thirty-nine. Uh, Cromcon, man, we've done three days where we go 12 hours a day. That's cool. Online. Okay. Cromcon was something I did every month live online. Uh, and it was one creator after another, 30 minutes, one after another, after another, after another, and then a panel wow. at the end of the day. And <laughs> it was cool, right? It was like a con. 
right? But it was online. Yeah. I wanted to do this at shows. I wanted to go to a show, set up, set the camera up, set the screen up behind us so that the, the fans walking by see themselves on screen. I mean, yeah, we're live right now, dude. You know, fucking, what's in the bag? Like, we, we were getting in, in the fans. Show us what's in your bag. What'd you buy? What's up? Who's oh, talking? That's cool. It was fun, dude. It was so much fun doing that it's show that weekend. We did it at uh, South Carolina. See, Mr. Pops, you you enjoy and you really love the fans. I mean, that's why I do. Like, like to me, day, day. the income is tertiary, which which you know I I almost don't care about it, but um you know I just enjoy. You know, Phil, I do this shit for a living. Talking to them, listening to them, and uh, you know also fulfilling some of their hopes and dreams. Like you know when you could draw this, you know like the werewolf head that that Les is drawing. There may be somebody out there who connects to it, who loves to it, who relates to it. You know, it's cool. You know, whatever. There's so many different adjectives, and 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 the thing is, you've you've possibly have made their lives slightly better. A, a story I'd like to share years ago when I was at a convention. Um, yeah, you know, I do caricatures, and a very morbidly obese lady was walking by, and and, and I just say, "Hey, get your caricature done," and she yells out, "Oh, I wouldn't fit on the sheet." So my response is, hey, I won't charge you for the second one. She turns around and thought, oh, God, I'm in trouble. You know? Uh, <laughs> but she comes down, she sits down, she says, draw me as if I were 120 pounds. And I asked her if I could palpitate uh, her cheek to get an idea of her bone structure. And she says, yes. So, so I, I, you know, I check it out. I draw her, and she burst into tears, and I got really nervous. And she said, no, no, no. Pulled out an older photograph, showed it to me, and it looked like, I drew it from the photograph because of wow. the palpitation. A uh, couple of years later, you know, very positive ending. This woman comes up. I don't recognize her. And she's teasing me a little bit. And then she gives me the hint. Remember the second sheet? She'd lost 140 pounds. Wow. What she did was she told me about her boohoo story with the marriage divorce turned to binge eating. But she put that caricature on that fridge. And every time she felt the weakness she would look at that caricature remember the fun time she had and it helped her mentally to lose weight mm -hmm. and the fact that that the art that was done helped an individual's life to become better told me that i'm on the right path and yeah. just imagine how much joy even though you know the person gives you money for it but how much joy your art gives people less and 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 for you, you I, 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 you know, I, I can sound really cynical sometimes because I'm like, yeah, I do it for the money, blah, blah, blah. It's my career or whatever. Yeah. And there's some truth to that. But yeah, I, you know, if, if it weren't for, for that kind of stuff, trust me, there's plenty of times when I don't make enough money off of this to justify why I keep doing it. But then, uh, you know, you, you, you meet people and you have these interactions with them and all that, and it makes it worthwhile. So... Yeah. You know, we do, we uh, do have a question for you, Les. Oh, oh Lord, yeah. Kirby, he wants to know what do you think about each of the werewolf looks that that there are in media, and and which is your favorite? Well, I kind of like most of them, and all of them, and for myself, I, I borrow from a lot of them. For um, I draw a lot of werewolf crap for fun. I always have. I've done a lot of different werewolf stuff in different media and different things, like as a uh, as a three D guy and as an animator. Uh, Homestead's actually the first werewolf comic I've ever gotten to do, and uh, it, it actually feels kind of strange because it's like, man, all these years, I'm surprised that it's the first time I've gotten to do one. Wow. And the uh, yeah, the. Uh, like I, I used to put out uh, a lot of uh, original figures that I would build, I would model, texture, and rig for people to use in Poser and Dash Studio, and uh, I put out a lot of different werewolves over the years, and they always did well for me. And those always there was always a different look to them. Um, I would say my 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 favorite 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 stuff in that vein is. Uh, uh, Bernie Wrightson's artwork, period. Bernie Wrightson's werewolves are the gold standard. They are perfect. There is none better. That is that. Fight me. Uh, 
but after Bernie, uh, like like to me, Bernie is to everything horror what Star Wars is to everything film. You know, OG Star Wars. Uh, I just I don't again yeah, when I'm talking when I'm thinking about favorites and stuff, I don't even consider them part of it because they're just so far outside everything else. Uh, but uh, let's see. I love I love well obviously like I said Bernie Wrightson. I really liked the werewolves in Underworld. Oh I yeah, mean, I liked oh, those a lot. They look corny uh, to me, but I still loved them. I, I liked the werewolves in Underworld. Um, of course, American Werewolf in London. And Jack, I'm turning into a meatloaf. Oh. Oh, God. And everybody thinks I'm crazy for this one, but and it's not the best werewolf movie ever made by any means, but my favorite werewolf movie. My favorite is not the best. I will always concede there are better. But the one I enjoy the most is The Howling Part 2. Considered one of the worst movies ever made. But I love that movie. And I love so many little things about that movie and the werewolves in it. I I, I, I could I could ramble on for days about that thing. Uh, Isn't Daniel Dax in, in that movie or, or one of the Howling movies? I don't. I don't know. She's a musician. I have such a crush on her. She has such a cute head. I know there's a... Uh, oh, shit. I can't even remember her name now. There's a blonde chick who plays a character named Stier Stierba. Okay. Who, who's the... Uh, uh, something Danning. Yeah. Civil Danning. Civil Danning. Yeah. Oh, man. I had a crush on her, too. Oh, and... Good Lord. Like, you know, I was probably 10 when that movie came out. And, uh, you know, or, you know, of course, I'm, I'm watching it on VHS back in the day. And, uh, wow. <laughs> just so, so many layers of, of, of just that got burned into my brain. I mean, that movie had, I, I, I will never... I, well, I kind of understand. Cause some of the effects are hokey. Some of the optical effects are real hokey. But the werewolves themselves are super cool looking. Yeah. And the damn thing's got Christopher Lee in. I'm like, okay. You got Christopher Lee. You got a handful of super hot chicks. And you got werewolves. Oh, We're yes. We're done. We're done. What the hell else do you need? It's awesome. Yes. So Your sister is a werewolf. Howling too. Uh, and Matt discovers that his sister was a werewolf and helps an investigator track down a gang of the monsters through the United States and Eastern Europe. Dun, dun, dun. What's funny is, the, like, I never remember it even having that title on it when I saw it as a kid. Yeah. So that's something I think has been added. It actually does it a real disservice. It, like, amps up a hokey expectation before you even get in. Yeah. And it's well, it has another AKA. Oh uh, God, what? Oh, uh, uh, forgive for, for forgive the um, uh, pejorative language, but uh, uh, Stribia, S T R I B A, Stribia, werewolf bitch. Oh, st Stierba. Yeah, Stierba, werewolf bitch. Nineteen eighty-five. After months of putting it off, my binge of oh, no, I'm just reading some guy's article. Okay, huh? I accidentally got into Reddit, so I'm going to run before I get down. 20 rabbit holes at once. <laughs> Man. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. And I would actually love, and I think it would be really good. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't even know who put, remember who put that movie out, who holds the rights to it. I would absolutely love, love to do a comic book adaptation of the howling one and two as like one big graphic novel. I would just flip my lid over that because I think it would be so cool. It could look so good. I think there's probably stuff that was that was in the script that maybe got left out from the for it. It watches like a lot of the problems with it to me are things that feel to me like they were probably left out. And uh, oh, yeah. It, it, but it's it's great. It's a great movie as far as I'm concerned. 
<laughs> Love this. So funny. That and it's got one of it's got one of my all time favorite songs in it. Yeah, uh, there was a band put together. I think the band just put together to do that movie called Babel, and they had a song. There was a theme song of the movie called Howling, and it plays a couple bits of it play a couple times in the movie, and then there's a performance at the end of it of them doing it. And it's a cool song. I used to cover that song in a metal band I was in. Like we we would do a straight up just like really baller grungy metal version of it that was it was a lot of fun. Now, did you know that the reason why Christopher Lee accepted the movie was he never did in all his career a werewolf movie until that one? Really? Uh, also, Sybil Downing was tired of having to go topless or nude uh, so often in her movies. Wanted to remain clothes for this one. The the, the, the uh, producer actually disagrees, but they came to a compromise uh, where Downing uh, would do a single topless shot. She was very angry on Ooh. watching the film's finish to find out that the end credits uh, featured the shot no less than 17 times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, while well, the music's playing. They cut back to it. It's just over and over her ripping her shirt off. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's funny as hell. Now, I didn't know this, but when uh, Sir Chris Lee was cast in Gremlins 2, the new batch in 1990, one of the first things he did was Apologies director Joe Dante, who directed Howling 2 for being in this movie. <laughs> huh? uh, another thing is the reason behind Sybil Danning wearing glasses was she would arrive on set one day and said she was not sure what to do because she had conjunctivitis of all things. <laughs> so they had her wear uh, uh, sunglasses. Uh, she protested because uh, the scenes were in, dis in indoors, but Philip told her, Sybil, you're the queen of werewolves, so you can do whatever you damn well like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's, she's, she's actually really cool in that movie. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I, mean, I used to have such a crush on her when I was, when I was a kid. I mean, she's one of those people who, you know, you know, there's certain actors or actresses, you know, when you see them, you know, then uh, whether or not you pass the straight tests and uh, Sybil uh, Danning, you know, was, was it for me? That's uh, like, like that, 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 yeah. Very, you very, know. very formative moment there in, uh, in a lot of young men's developments. Was yes. Re repeated shots, you know, repeated, uh, plays of that one shot of her it was like good lord wow uh, now, now here's something kind of nuts uh the director uh, Filippi mora did not know that sir christopher lee was a war hero in uh, czechoslovakia uh, it, it's now at uh, the czech republic uh yeah. this was something that he was not so, this was uh, not something he was allowed to talk about but during world war ii uh, he was part of an intelligence agency. Oh, and yeah. when they showed up uh, to film this movie in Czechoslovakia, uh, Lee was greeted with a hero's welcome at the airport when they arrived. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when uh, Filippi first found out about um, Christopher's past. And uh, he'd been involved in killing one of the top Nazi officials, uh, Richard uh, Heydrich, uh, and uh, everything else. You know, the, yeah. the director couldn't believe it, that he literally had a war hero you know, on his hand. One day he took, um, uh, Chris Lee took uh, Felipe to Prague to visit the church. He remembers Sir Christopher Lee saying, dear boy, please come in with me and let me tell you about what I've seen. And he took Felipe inside into the basement and proceeded to tell him the story of how he was placed there uh, where people had been trapped by the Nazis and some terrible things occurred there. And it was such a profound moment, Felipe, because he realized just uh, from where uh, Christopher Gravitas uh, came from that oh, they yeah. seen such horrors in his lifetime. You oh, know? I mean, Chris, there's a lot of a lot of conjecture. I don't know if it's substantiated, but a lot of people believe that Christopher Lee is who uh, James Bond was based on. Wow, that could be true. So, oh yeah. wow, okay. Here's something cool about Christopher Lee too that that even puts him higher on the cool list. And any of you who are Jewish, you should be bowing right now uh, for every word that I'm going to say right now. Christopher Lee was also a Nazi hunter yep. for a couple of years after World War II. He'd lived such an intriguing, compelling life. Most people 
you know, had no idea what he was, which gives more credence to the James Bond that you were talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, he, uh, Chris, Chris Lee was MI6 for a long time. Oh, I had no idea about that. Yeah. Uh, and the man was also a direct descendant of Charlemagne. Yeah. And before he died, produced two metal albums on which he did vocals, writing songs about his ancestors. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, he's one of the coolest guys to ever live. It's like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? You know what? The era in which I live has its problems, but I can look at everybody born, you know, after, I guess he's been gone for about 10 years now. Yeah. I can look at everybody born after he's, after he's passed. And I'm like, I feel sorry for you because you all live in a world without Christopher Lee. Yeah. Uh, what what well, else do you? I got to jump in here and tell you guys. One of yeah, yeah, yeah. Regulars, I was ask you. One, one of our regulars on the Madness Open Draw stream on Sundays is a relation to Christopher Lee. Really, so, wow. Mr. James Lee is also, and he. If, if you really want to hear some stories about Christopher Lee, yeah. Oh, that's cool. How do we get him on the show? <laughs> huh? I would get him on a show in Christopher Lee, uh, and uh, 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 what, what Les could do is just draw Christopher Lee images, and oh. then have that person interviewed to talk about Christopher Lee's stories. How cool would that be? That would be sweet. I could dig that. Yeah. Yeah, he's a uh, he's he's a regular on the Madness Draw Stream. He's in the Madness. He's uh, you know, he's around every week. Come come Sunday one o'clock. He's up in here ah. drawing. So you know. Uh, He's also an artist, obviously. Yeah. Mm. He has a book called The Steins. Really? Yeah. I keep meaning to be here for those Sunday draw streams. It just seems like something always pulled me away. Yeah, like me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Charles, anytime you want to uh, help hook me up and get me in, in, in a show so I can do my show from a show... That'd be sweet, man. <laughs> okay. I, I, you know, you know, I think it'd be fun. You know, why not? Just, just, it's just, it's uh, the Madness Road Show, right? I mean, I mean, if you could have like, like, like beers, beers, fears, and and horror drinks, you know, or 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 wine and 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 something else, you know, why can't we have just the amazing pops and 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 the, uh, you know. Uh, what what's funny is I go to the Hall of Heroes con and every every year there's oh that's right you know Robert E Brown I, 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 Robert E Brown who's that <laughs> the guy who did uh, Band of the Werewolf mm. you did, wait wait you did Hollow Con no I said Hall of Heroes okay okay I missed her it's okay. in uh, Elkhart Indiana. Oh, okay. It's where it's where the Hall of Heroes Museum is. Right, right. They do a con every year, but every year there's these guys there from the Indiana Whiskey Company. Mm. And they're giving out samples. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I hung out with them, came back, hung out with them a little more, came back, hung out with them a little more, came and back. And then you don't run the rest of the week. Did, I did an interview with them, you know. Um, we got there's a couple shorts on the network, different times I've talked to those guys, but um, yeah, man, if you can bring your whiskey to the con, why can't we do a show from the con? <laughs> you know, I'm wondering if um, uh, the last show I was at that they had um, uh, what is that called? Voodoo Ranger, a beer, and, and I talked to them about developing liquids. You know, but but they were like, oh no, blah 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 blah. So I'd like to find somebody who might be friendly because both Les and I, with our properties, I'm imagining some of those being liquids. Um, you know, going out to different uh, events. You know, whether it's bubble water or bubble water plus, you know, CBC or things like that. You know, I worked with this one group, designed something, and uh, uh, wasn't paid for, it, which which kind of was annoying, but. Uh, yeah, well, just it comes out. If it comes out, then it'll be a good payday. How cool. about some of this right here? Yeah, wink, wink. You know, this is the madness sauce. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. Ha! 
That's awesome. This is the madness sauce. Now, let me tell you a little something about this. This yeah, is yeah. A honey mustard, but it's a honey mustard that in 35 ounces, there's nine Carolina Reapers. Wow. Oh, geez. That's a seven-ounce awesome. bottle right there, right? That's a seven-ounce bottle, I think. Yeah. No, it's a five-ounce bottle. So se you get seven bottles. That's going to be awful rub trade on your butthole when it comes oh, out. Oh, dude, I love it. It's great. <laughs> oh, That's that speaks volumes it. about you, Pops. I, I got something weird when it comes to hot sauce. Pops likes it when it burns the hole. Dude, oh, my I God. I like hot stuff. I always have. I lived in Phoenix for 35 years. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know. Um, have you ever had Satan sauce? I've had the insanity. Yeah, uh, hold on. So that, uh, I'm going to turn off my camera for a second and and uh, try try to find. Oh wait, no, I got a cool image, so I'll leave that up. We we have a bottle of, of insanity in the fridge. Mm. I tell you what, one drop of that would light a ramen soup up, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, just one drop in the sauce in in the in the broth will light a ramen soup right up. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> How are we looking in the chat over there? We got any folks hanging out? Oh, we got sketchy guy and Abbo Grizzly and Rant and Ryan and Kirby Kirby. Um, but we have like 39 people watching right now, but most of them are watching on, on Twitter. Wild. On the Madness Comic. Twitter and on the Critical Blast Twitter, we have 33 people watching. And then on the Madness Comic Network, we got half a dozen people tuning in. So it's cool. Nice. Now, now take a look at this. It's it's like a, a called Satan Sauce or something. And this is pure capsin. Oh, nice. Now, wow. the way I discovered it was I was traveling cross country with uh, one of my other colleagues, and I go to a barbecue stop place right you know so you know and i'd just be my normal self and and uh order th their loaded nachos with barbecue stuff things on it and i see this you know and then i just take it and pour some on it and the owner just said uh mister uh you'll have to pay for a new one and i said what do you mean you won't be able to eat it i'm like okay so i ate it and i'm eating it i'm like oh that's pretty good and mm -hmm. the whole restaurant just stopped, applauded. I'm like, what's going on? And then the guy hands me literally every one of his spices and stuff. And he said he never saw anybody do it. Then I go later, I'm eating it. And okay, it's hot. And, and I'm driving. And my friend looks it up. And he says, um, is, 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 eight, is 8 million Scoville units hot? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, ridiculous. That's no, so so I was like, you know, boop, 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 boop. That's, uh, uh, that's a little toasty. Yeah, and 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 and, and uh, for some reason, I don't know why, it could be the same reason why I can have my teeth drilled without Novocaine, but um, uh, you know, uh, and, and I don't get report. So which is the same reason he likes chicks with whips because the man begs pain. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Gray Wolf? What's happening? Mm -hmm. <laughs> got the Gray Wolf in the chat. Look. Now, now I got a question uh, with you, uh, a professional question with uh, what you're doing. Okay. Uh, Less. Um, yeah. Because the hand is in, uh, you know, is, is like that. Oh, it is like that. You know. Um, are you actually going to do the hand on a different layer? Yeah. Or are you going to erase it? I'm going to do it on a different layer. I could, I could just erase it. Right, but, I mean, but uh, if, now, if, if I wanted to be doing this closer to traditional inks, I would erase it. Right, uh, or I would mask it because uh, that's something that's actually a traditional technique. I'm going to show one morning sometime okay. when I'm really talking about techniques. Is uh, airbrush guys will recognize what I'm talking about probably more than ink folks. Oh, yeah. I I honestly don't know any ink folks. I've never seen any ink folks do this, and I can't imagine that they don't, though. Is uh, There's a thing called liquid mask or frisket, and it's, oh, it's, frisket? it's like frisket. It's like a liquid uh, rubber. Oh, yeah, and frisket. I thought you said brisket because I was like, yeah, beef brisket at Les's house. Let's all go. The uh, And you take liquid frisket, and uh, if you want to be able to use like a brush to ink over stuff, but you want and you want to be able to get like smooth lines going like right here, if I wanted to be able to ink like this and not worry about stopping and starting at the finger, then I would take 
liquid frisk it and fill in all that area with it. Then just ink like I am right here. And then once it all dries, you take your finger and rub on it. And that stuff peels right off and it leaves a clean hunt. Wow. It's a slick little trick. And uh, it's, it's one of the reasons, like I have people sometimes look at my original pages and they're like, damn, these inks are clean. How are you getting these lines going through that? You know, it's like frisket. Throw that frisket on there, man. Frisket is your friend. Yes. And so is brisket. It is <laughs> a friend in your tummy. Oh, Lord. But there is this barbecue place in, 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 in Kentucky land, which is just amazingly good. Oh, Hoskins. Yeah. Do you like brisket, uh, Mr. Pops? Uh, Mr. Pops doesn't have teeth. Oh. Uh, well, if this brisket you, is good enough, you don't need teeth. You can <laughs> eat Hoskins brisket, Pops. I, yeah. I ain't found one yet. Yeah, oh. it, 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 it's so good. I took a straw as an experiment, the type you use, the uh, the giant fat ones that use boba tea, and 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 was sucking up the brisket, and Lester was like, what are you doing? And yeah, I'm like, sucking the brisket. Hoskins brisket is the smoothest, like, the, I mean, it just melts in your mouth. It li I mean, literally melts in your mouth. It's ridiculous, man. Well, then, it's Kirby, really Kirby, funny. you should draw one. A, a werewolf and send it to us so we could just show it. It's like, hey, Kirby, Kirby, thanks to the world. Or you should draw a giant cat like Rari. Could you see Rari at versus the werewolf? Oh, Lord. Oh, dude, I actually had an idea the other day that it's completely stupid, but I want it whenever, whenever we get the Rari thing off the ground, I want to do a sequel based on these chickens I've got. Oh, that's great. It's, it's, uh, you know, it just called Kaiju chicken. Oh my God. You know, and All right, did you fall? That's fine, that's fine. Okay. Awesome. literally a Kaiju chicken is stomping the crap out of some little town and, and your big cat Kaiju has to come to the rescue. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, rough storyline with the uh, Kaiju Nekano Rari, if, 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 if I could talk a little bit about it, um, sure. is, uh, uh, she was, she, in real life, she's based off of uh, a uh, exotic that we had. There's only 74 of, of her kind in existence. Now there's only 15. So she'll, soon she'll be extinct. And uh, breeding her kind is now illegal, from what I understand. So that will be it. And I had the good fortune of having her for 15 years. Uh, very exotic. Had uh, a rosettes. Looked like a miniature panther. Um, mm -hmm. And she died, and we buried her in the front. So the story starts at, we thought she died, but she was in a deep coma. And she ended up being infused with a Zarnonian element. And uh, years later, when a Zarnonian comet comes, you know, orbiting around the Earth, once every 20,000 years, Kaiju emerge and starts ripping up and resetting the Earth to, like, start fresh again. So, um, and it turns out that Rari doesn't react like the other kaiju because one, she has 37 genomes instead of chromosomes, instead of 38 or 36. And all the other kaiju have an even balance. So she has her own will. Two, she sees all of humanity as her kittens to be protected. <laughs> so just imagine it. And the scene that behind me is that the ninjas want to steal her chi for greater power. And she stamped a car to show like, don't mess with me. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we're currently working up some adventures and Les, excitingly, will be helping me develop a toy uh, for it. And so after we really get, get our sea legs um, for Kickstarter and fundraising and fulfilling, um, there is amazing stuff that we will do. You know, who knows? Maybe there'll even be adventures of a certain, certain green character that Mr. Pops does. Who could you possibly be talking about? We don't know. Some crumb. <laughs> Some crumb may have his own adventures one day. Well, I, he, he I, had, I want to do crumb versus the kaiju chicken. There, yes. There, yes. Been, there, there have been stories written already. And, and 
we just haven't published anything yet. But guess what? A short story. And we can publish it. it. You know, yeah. we, we it, it'd, be, it'd be a silver, you know, a, a silver sixes or sixes silver pops production. Uh, Glenn Fleming did a hatch. Yeah. Hatch crom story. And, and uh, Dan Monroe did a crom story with Ye Gods. And there, there's been a few. I think Hex Allen has a crom story with his uh, Nephilim squadron. And oh, yeah, that's we cool. Could, we could put together something, man. You know. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, what might be fun is just to develop stuff as different secret stretch goals. It's, you know. This is kind of funny. This was uh, <coughs> this was Mavericks and and Natverse, a crossover that they did. And then if you see over there underneath the lifeguard chair, there there's my <laughs> there, there's my dude hanging out under the lifeguard chair. Yeah. Um, he just makes appearances all over the place. Did you know he's also in crochet form? That's great. <laughs> if I were to do crom, I'd have him with a giant Q-tip cleaning out Rari's ear. Uh. <laughs> well, he's he's a bit of a pothead. Yeah, yeah. And, and the reason why he's cleaning out Rari's ear is is uh, he wants to see uh, what happens if he smokes the resins. Well, we, we could all, we could always match him up with this guy too, right, Les? Oh no. That's crazy. Oh, God. <laughs> so tell me the story behind that one. <laughs> that's the horror. That's that's the Les Paul seal. <laughs> oh, that's my God. Les, Les Pop seal. That's what that is. Because of the way me and Les say horror. And oh, Carrie got oh, a kick oh, out oh, of it. She said horror. we sound like seals when we're saying horror. 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 horror, 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 horror. Oh, my God. That's so funny. So she called us seals, and then she yeah. made a seal because people do weird shit around here. That's what so, they do. So, so um, could you imagine you have a horror host, but he dresses like a pimp because he keeps showing you horrors? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. God. Hello. I'm going to tell There's Brian to start, yeah, no, I'm a, to happen I'm gonna tell Brian to start dressing right, like a right. pimp. He has a grandfather in his hat. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell Brian to start dressing like a pimp for the horror movie club. That, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll call him Polly Pimp. <laughs> no, like, right. one of the platform shoes with a goldfish in it. Like, uh, I'm gonna get you, sucker. And yes, that's, that's another uh, show we're talking about. The horror movie club, right here on Thursday nights at nine o'clock. See, I gotta get the plug in whenever we bring up one of the other shows. <laughs> Mm. Oh, and also, I just wanted you to know, Kirby, Kirby in the chat. He also is is a regular, um, a recent regular on the on the uh, draw stream on Sundays. Cool. He's been coming out too, so you know, um, we always, we always have a good crowd, a good bunch of people out drawing on Sunday, having a good time. You know, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's called Satan's Blood. The uh. Satan's blood. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, I'm sorry. It was eight hundred thousand Scoville units. So uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's quite up to insanity, but you know, I think insanity has a million. Yeah, but 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 like the guy, but the guy, like I said, um, he freaked out. Yeah, he yeah, freaked yeah, out. yeah. At the at the store, I mean, I couldn't oh, believe yeah. that happened. I'm like, I had no idea, and I'm like, this tastes good. So it's funny. I went to a restaurant, a Mexican restaurant in Indiana. A couple. Oh, wait, that's ago. allowed. And, and <laughs> I, I, I oh, did, did. oh, if you only knew Indiana, my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. I went to I went to a place in, a, a Mexican place in Indiana and and I'm looking at the, the stuff on the walls, right? The posters on the walls with the with the meals and stuff. And and one of them says, you know, this is pretty much the hottest shit in the house. And I'm like, all right, I want one of them. And dude's like, dude's like, no, you I don't think you want that. Like, yeah, I want that. He's, it's really hot. That's, that's what I want. Really hot. Don't worry about it. Just bring me the food. And, and I, you know, he brings me food and I'm eating. And he comes up. He's like, hey, you, you good? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's all right. It's not bad. Pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. You know, go like, go on about your business, washing dishes, whatever you do. I'm, I'm eating right now. You know, um, it wasn't no big deal. It was just, you know, it was, it was, it was medium, medium hot. See, 
It, the, it the, wasn't the proper way to buy out of the heat it levels. The right. shit you got in the house, dude. You know, you look uh, at the waiter and go, "Does it hurt your butthole?" N- rarely. I've, I've rarely <laughs> had anything that made. I have yet to have it hurt my my backside dropout. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't. That's what I mean. It, it, it's. I rarely had that issue where it like yeah. burned me out, and never yeah. to the point if I got burned out where I went, "Oh, I'm never eating that again." Well, you know. <laughs> my my poor supple little hole can't take it, but my mouth is just fine with oh all that God. super spicy shit. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you, you know, the, there's this one time uh, a friend of mine married a uh, Thai lady, and uh, uh, before <laughs> are you sure it was a lady? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you two are so awful. Well, but, what, uh, what 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 like an ultra modern kind of lady was it? No, no, no. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you have some question there. Yeah, it was an old-fashioned Catholic, which is like only five percent, and it was hysterical when they do when they do the money, you like like donate some money. They they have this bare tree with clips on the side, and then they would clip the money onto the tree to like make it grow leaves, and that would be this money tree that they would like you know. Now that. we donated, but um, so so you know the, the uh, I'm at her family's home and. All the men go to this one spot to eat, and Will and his wife go to another spot, and and they tell me, oh, oh, you know, come to us, eat with us, you know. So I'm with all the ladies, and my cat want to try what they're eating, and then the guy says, oh no, too hot, too hot. You you stay with ladies. I'm like, yeah. oh, let me try it, let me try it. So they're all laughing, and they serve me stuff, and they're literally cutting off a cheek from a pig head, pig head. Nice. So they put their stuff on it, and I eat it. Okay, I'm eating it, and I'm eating it. And then they all stand up and they look at them and, and the one who's speaking says, Charles is man. He sits with us. You you stay where you're at, William. You stay with the ladies. <laughs> and so I got to eat with the boys because apparently I was able to eat their hot stuff. And yeah. it was it was impressive hot. It was like not, you know, not. Oh, okay, here's a good way to explain. I know I'm jumping around because, you know, my brain is normal again. Okay, you eat, you eat the, like the Mexican or, or the Thai or this stuff. It's like the hot that once you have it, it keeps choking you and trying to choke the life out of you. And uh. you're like fighting for survival. But when it comes to Japanese wasabi hot, it's like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, it hits you hard and it runs away to tease you later. <laughs> right? Oh shit! Yeah, it doesn't have a port. It goes yeah. away. But I did eat this one soup that was so hot. Even I was only able to take three bites out of it. They had a contest where you win fifty bucks. I'm like, okay, I can do this. And what they used was wasabi oil. Now the problem mm. was because the soup was so hot, some of the oil vaporized. So when you're over, you're inhaling, and my lungs got coated with wasabi hot sauce oil. You know that was vaporized, mm. and I started coughing my lungs, and I couldn't do it. You know, and, and but they told me that the fact that I did three uh, scoops was pretty impressive. Oh yeah, man! On the way back from Wisconsin, we stopped off, or way from Milwaukee, we stopped off at uh, some little town uh, outside of Racine, and. Uh, Got a uh, Mexican food at this little hole in the wall place. There's nobody there. And the only person working was a little old guy who was the cook. And I was like, yes, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah, those are the places. Those are the places. And I asked, I, I just asked him outright, every Mexican place I go to, I'm like, do you have mole? And he's like, yeah. You know, he's like, yes, we, we get mole. I was like, give me the mole. Give me, give me the mole. Mole cabullo, please. And it was the best food I had all week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Always the little, always the little hole in the wall. Mexican places are always the best. Always. Absolutely, man. Now, now in Chicago, every Mexican place is a hole in the wall. So it's like, yeah, yeah, but Chicago is a hellhole. <laughs> I, I, I have no desire to spend any more time in Chicago than I absolutely have to. And then here you go. You got to spend time there. Ha ha. I'm not, I ain't happy about it. 
All because of me. I'm like, I'm like, why can't y'all have the, have uh, have a good show someplace else? Yeah, Chicago. Uh, Chicago. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. You know, I, working on that. Chicago oh angers me. Okay, here, here's one thing. This is going to be the public service. Uh, two, I'm going to give two public service messages uh, for fun. Um, Thrivent.com is kind of interesting. It's something I've discovered. It's a non-for-profit that helps people understand financial literacy. So, you know, down the line, I'll be talking more about it here and there. But I got something. Oh, I misread it. Um, I was talking about uh, blood donation, and only 5% of our population donates blood. Yeah. And I've done um, so much blood, I, I, I'm, I'm at the five-gallon mark, <laughs> you know. But it, it, it's 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 incredibly helpful. I mean, you know, like, did you ever? Okay, did either of you two guys ever have surgeries where you needed blood? Nope. No. Okay, so we're lucky. So but we're we're one of the few statisticals. But you know, just just imagine how important it is. I know. Every time I go to the hospital, they just take, 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 take. They ain't never giving me. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally the. We, the we only time I'm been... we gotta get ready to wrap this one up because we got doc show coming up here in a bit. Oh yeah! Oh wow, we've gone over. Oh yeah, I don't mind going over. That's okay. That don't bother. Yeah. By the way, do you know your blood types? Uh yeah. What's your blood type? It's O. O. Les, what's your blood type? Oh shit! Oh my god! <laughs> That's awesome. And then uh, me, uh, I, I'm a B positive. I, I always wondered why we've got bees in classes. Now I understand. You're the corniest guy. Outstanding then, right? Wait, what? O must mean outstanding then, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and B means uh, 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 brilliant. <laughs> you ain't right. You just ain't right. I swear you ain't right. <laughs> That makes it fun. Oh wow! I just saw General's hot sauce where they look like grenades. You know, we should like, like, like do custom art for for stuff and, and work with with somebody who makes a hot sauce and just try it and then watch ourselves cry and get yeah. out. To the you see this piece right here, Charles? Hold on, hold on. Uh, let me get back to it. One, give me a second. Come on, pull up. What are you doing? I did something wrong. You're still here. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, there we go. Not saying. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Guess who did that? Less? Yeah. They could tell. Yeah. Because it looks good. <laughs> yeah, funny. I got my werewolf done. Oh, yeah, let's see it. God, that's so fast. You know, you know, you know what's the difference between somebody sneezing and less drawing? Uh, less I can sell it, messy. I, I can sell it, <laughs> yeah. You uh, can't see what, Abo? Oh, uh, Abo says we can't see it. You can't see what we can see. It. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see it. So, you're talking about what I was showing you? you no, 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 no. It was, um, Abo, uh, one of, one of our amazing uh, people who watch, which we are so grateful for. Oh, that's how you can see people's comments. I just figured it out. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was super quick. He's jealous. He's been watching the whole time. Oh, this um, is great. Ammo does a book or two of his own. Yeah, uh, but it takes him six yeah. months. No. no. Just Winters of Yggdrasil, and, and he has a new one that's on, uh, that's, that's digital. Yeah. He did all hmm. digital comics. Wow. Then, Someday uh, I'll draw on this too. Or maybe when I'm Les's house where I figure out how to do with my stuff. When, when, I, I'll be a fan when I get when I get up and running on a book, I tend to knock out about four pages a day penciled and inked. Yeah. Kirby, Kirby, uh, uh Les is trying to break the speed of Kirby, just to let you know. I figure if I draw fast enough, it'll start to make time go backwards. Yes. That's happened. You know, there was one time I, I'm with Les and I'm telling him something, and all of a sudden there's like no, I just Char Charles will be over at my place. You know, he'll he'll come out here to, to Kentucky for a work session and 
you know, he'll be talking about something across the room and he'll be like, oh, well, we need something like this. And he'll get on talking about something. And like five minutes later, I'm like, here, check it out. Yeah. So, there you go, Abbo. Can you see it now? Can you see it now, brother? That pop. There you go. That pop. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, Pop, have you ever been in, 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 in a pickle or in a bottle? <laughs> no. Oh, wow. If you bring baking soda with you, then you could say you're a soda pop. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, could you imagine um, uh, Yoda? He's like, soda. Fill the combination. I know, right? Good help is so hard to find. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Mr. Pop, should we uh, step back and let you do some commercials? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to run a few ads. Right. Get out right, of you know, I, I, I actually uh, intended to talk about the process I was using on this earlier, but uh, that never came about. So maybe next time I'll, I'll actually do something semi-serious. Yeah, draw a Rari. <laughs> yeah, That's do, do Rari next time. I'll be very quiet. No. Sh it, uh, yeah, have her punching like 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 climbing a building, like, like, bap, like, like she thought it was string. I look at it like this, guys. There's 40 people watching right now, and if there's people watching, then they're being entertained. You're doing just fine, Les. Oh, just, thank God. Just All do right. whatever you do every week, man. You know what I mean? Oh, that's funny, man. Oh, by the way, Abby, yes, we would be, or Abba, we'd right. be incredibly happy if you did pick up your speed. But don't do that when you're driving. Now oh, by the way, I got to go to Cairo next week. Now, now that I'm... Uh... Now that I'm uh, done with this, I can actually look over and scan the uh, the comments. Yeah. Uh, werewolf looks. Everybody's uh, like, Les is great. Les is a god. Les is so cool. <laughs> Out of Les. Why is Charles on here? Don't, be, don't, don't, don't be hating. <laughs> <laughs> don't be hating. Man. Oh, let's see. Well, you know, with, with the Abo, you, you made a comment super quick. I'm jealous. One of the things that Les has done, which which is is uh, primarily done in animation, is he's developed formulas for um, speeding up his process. So he's basically just here's a formula template. This is what I do. Yes, he does have uh, some very good um, skills with his hyper tenacity uh, in his uh, right hand uh, for now, and he's working to develop the re regain the hyper tenacity in the left hand, but. Um, the uh, motor skills can be trained and retrained. Less is more. That's true. Like uh, I've never heard that before. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> the first time, huh? Uh, now, I, 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 uh, I, what, what I'll say about my speed is, one, I've been doing it for 31 years. So there's a lot of little things that I do that uh, just they don't take thought anymore. And that that's that's a that's a big thing, uh, and then probably the thing that I tell young artists a lot, and I don't I think most of them probably don't even understand what I'm referring to, is that if you want to get fast, and you wanna you want to be able to do stuff and actually be fast enough to turn out enough work that you can make a living. And I tell this not just to comic artists, but like to animators or graphic design, any any kind of art. Go learn how to use an airbrush. Yes. And then take your ass down to some place, uh, you know, that, that to to a shop. Get somebody to let you work in a high volume airbrush shop, especially in a tourist spot, because you will learn formulas. You will learn techniques for burning out stuff so fast because you'll have to because if you don't you won't get paid you just won't you'll get paid on commission and if you want to make anything you can actually make a lot of money if you get fast and you got to burn it out and uh usually usually some old some old airbrush fart will will teach you uh you know some of the techniques and things like that and you'll figure out some of your own and uh you know i i ran uh I did ran and did the artwork for three airbrush shops in Lexington, Kentucky over the course of a few years at the same time as I was doing comics back in the nineties and uh, nothing, absolutely nothing will, uh, will cause you to get fast. Like having a line full of people 
outside a kiosk in a mall and you are standing there being the trained monkey who's got to burn the stuff out. Oh, yeah. You, you, you want to get through those people and get the stuff done. And it, it teaches you to divorce yourself from the, the emotional content or whatever artwork you're doing so that you can just get it done. Teaches you the discipline of working on it and it, it teaches you fast techniques. I, I'm a big, big advocate of that. It's, it's weird, but I'm like, and if not airbrushing, something similar like uh, like burning out sketches at carnivals. I used to do that. Oh, and, uh, doing, I love doing carnivals. Sketches and, and caricatures. Are, oh, I freaking hate them. Hate them. They drive me nuts. And I got to stand there and be nice to those damn people the whole time <laughs> while I'm trying to get, like, yeah, it's like, like now I, I just want to draw your damn face, get you 20 bucks, and get you gone. I mean, straight up at a carnival. I'm, I'm, you know, it's like the screaming kids and all the noise and everything. And I am not happy, but I've done it. I did it when I was a teenager and uh, being in that kind of environment though, uh, environments like that will absolutely force you to get quick. And then when you come back to comics, man, you'll, you'll just, you'll, it'll, it'll translate. That's kind of thing. We'll see you all. Next Wednesday, 11 a.m., with Les and Charles. And I probably won't crash the whole show because Charles will be on time next week. Yeah, Charles. The sorry. The eclipse he's on, be sleepy. He, he's on oh, Chicago oh, Standard oh, Time. I was well, on, he, he, he probably had to get to his stuff through traffic in Chicago, which is shocking that he's even still alive. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, and, and I want to apologize to everybody. I tried to post a simple link for the uh, Satan's Blood Hot Sauce, and it just overlinked. And I guess I'm banned from from. Oh, whatnot, was that so. you? I didn't know it was you. I thought that was just some bot dropping some crazy stuff in the chat. No, 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 no. I, I tried mm -hmm. to do that. So you know, you know. Hold on now. Now, before we take off, reminder: uh, any of y'all who are going to be at C2E2, uh, I will be there. Just yeah. look me up. You'll find me there. Uh, let's see. I'm going to be at C2E2. Then what's coming up next after that? Uh, free comic book day, May I think May 4th, I hope. May the 4th uh, be with you. Uh, uh -oh. free, free, free comic book day, I'll be uh, unveiling a pair of paintings and signing, uh, doing signings and sketches and stuff at uh, Wonderland Comics uh, new store opening in Clarksville, Tennessee. Then, let's see, after that, I'm going to be in... To Clarksville. Uh, the following week, I'll be in Knoxville for Frank and Con Horror Show. Uh, then let's see what's after after Frank and Con. Wow, I gotta try now. Weren't we talking to a guy about doing a con together down by you? Which one is one of one of those? Oh, we could talk offline about that. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, that that's that's a different thing altogether. Okay. Yeah, these, these just came up like in the last 48 hours. Yeah. So there's a, uh, yeah, I know there's at some point I'm going to be doing some stuff with Nirvana comics in Knoxville. Oh, nice. So that, that's a whole thing. And uh, then uh, I believe September I'll be at uh, Columbus, Ohio for the Ohio comic con. Yeah. And, uh, in October around Halloween, these are things that are scheduled. There's probably more stuff going to get scheduled between now and then. In October, if anybody from back home is watching or you're close to where I come from, Owingsville, Kentucky, I'll be uh, coming out to sign books at a grand opening of the town's new library there. That is going to be so cool. Uh, are you going to be part of um, the Superman celebration? This year? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I got to double check with Morgan on that and find out. Right. But uh, probably, I, I'm the same probably. thing. I, I think so, but but I don't know. So, yeah, yeah, I I, I got to double check. I mean, I usually am these days. So, yeah, I, I hope so. You yeah. guys can figure out scheduling in the backstage. I'm gonna go ahead and end this thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, right. hey, yeah. Real quick, yeah, I, just, I was just dropping some dates before yeah. we go. So, <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Pops, can you unban me? Did I what? Unban me from making comments. No. Um, no, you've been a bad boy. I think I put you in timeout. You should come back. Okay. But I did see your comment there. I did 
Oh, good, good, good. He, because I wrote, sorry, guys, and it said this comment has failed to pass to Sixus Media. And I'm like, oh, no. Uh, no, thanks, Les. I use toilet paper. <laughs> Charles getting spanked by Pops. Woo! No, with Charles, though, first off, no. I thought it was a bot. And yeah. Charles, let me tell you a little secret. In in those addresses, in those yeah. links, everything from the question mark <coughs> on is not needed. That's oh. all direct bullshit. Okay. You see? So you just Ugh. grab the link up to the question mark. Okay. And you copy that. Okay. okay. Now now I see. Now I get it. Everything oh, after that is all garbage. No. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna nope. I'm going to send it to you so that people can see it, so they can get the okay. Satan sauce. So I'm passing it to you, and then Pops, you could uh, post it to the normal comments because I've been banned. Yeah, see, that's well, guys, yeah, there you go. Oh, there it is. It's not we, banned. We are we are well and truly past our time, so let's uh, let Pops take it on out with some, with uh, some sponsorships and all that. Till next week, y'all. We're out of here. I don't have Thanks, a call. everybody. Thanks for watching. We love you. What? City Magazine is just really pulling out all the stops, man. Your guys' production value of this of this magazine has gone insane. I mean, look at the. I mean, I remember when you guys it was black and white. Even when it was black and white, I thought your quality was great. But damn, they have just. I mean, they just really stepping it up a notch. Look at this. James Corbett, boys. James Corbett, genuinely cutting, um, but also funny and obviously just chaotic and and very fun i love flip city it has brought new types of badassery and integrity to the print medium Glamorized and embraced by Hollywood, feared in the underworld, Benjamin Bugsy Siegel was one of the most powerful men in America. He was also one of the most hated. The man who gave birth to Las Vegas was gunned down in the luxurious home of his glamorous lover. Almost 80 years later, his murder remains unsolved. Who killed Bugsy?
how do you end this thing? How do you put the where? There was the brakes on this bus. I forgot. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Are Have a good night.